I assume this lovely young lady is your daughter. And I'm getting the feeling that my mom doesn't like you. Maybe you should go. Yeah, that's my daughter. She's very opinionated. It's okay. I get that reaction a lot. You see, I left Curtis and his brother and his mom when Curtis was a very, very young child. And they thought I was dead. That's terrible. I know. Which is why Curtis's and my reunion wasn't a happy one. Gee, I wonder why. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm still hoping I can find my way into Curtis's good graces. Well, maybe don't rush things. Give him time to process the fact that you are alive. Let him come to you. That is very sound advice, Dr. Robinson. Although no one's ever accused me of listening to sound reason. Pleasure meeting you. Good to see you again, Dr. Robinson. Mm. Yes. <laughs> we have to stop bumping into each other like this. <laughs> so that's why your relationship with Curtis has been backburnered. Mm. He's dealing with his dead dad suddenly coming back to life. I could give him a few pointers. Do me a favor and don't. I understand why Curtis is uncomfortable being around his father. But why are you? My father was... Marshall Ashford makes me uncomfortable because when he first arrived at Port Charles, he was asking questions about Curtis without revealing his true identity. And Curtis was angry that he was sneaking around behind his back. And now after learning that his father has been alive, for all these years, he just feels like his life has been upended. Don't blame him. Curtis's father pretended to be dead much longer than yours. And your dad only did it to keep you safe from Cyrus Renault. Maybe Mr. Ashford had a good reason, too. Well, if he did, he's not saying what it was. And as much as dad was away because of work, he was a huge part of my life. He was always there when I needed him. He sure was. Curtis, wow. He didn't even have a father growing up. Curtis Byron.